Theodore Seuss Geisel was born on March 2nd, 1904, and lived until September 24th, 1991. He was an American writer, poet, cartoonist, uh, most widely known for his children's books, written under the pen names Dr. Seuss, Theo Lassig, and in one case, Rosetta Stone. He published 46 children's books. 46 children's books. And, and some of the books, um, well, some of his best-selling books are, are Green Eggs and Ham, The Cat in the Hat, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, Horton Hatches the Egg, Horton Hears a Who, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And here's, here's an excerpt from Green Eggs with Ham. And here's the cover of Horton Hatches the Egg. Um, Geisel also worked as an illustrator for advertising campaigns, most notably for Flit and Standard Oil as a political cartoonist for PM, a New York City newspaper. During World War II, he worked, with an, he worked in an animation department of the U.S. Army where he wrote Design for Death, a film that later won the 1947, 1947 Academy Awards. For, for documentary feature. Geisel's birthday, which is March 2nd, V-Day of March 2nd, so his birthday of March 2nd has been adopted as the annual date for National Read Across America Day an initiative on reading created by the National Education Association. Geisel was born in Springfield, Massachusetts, to Theodore Robert and Henrietta Seuss Geisel. All of his grandparents were German immigrants. His father managed the family brewery and later supervised Springfield's public park system after the brewery closed due to prohibition. Mulberry Street in Springfield, made famous for Dr. Seuss's first children's book, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street, is less than a mile southwest of his boyhood home on Fairfield Street. Geisel attended Dartmouth College, and he, he wrote for the Jack-O-Lantern, which was the, the humor magazine on campus. So he worked for the Jack Lantern. He was a writer. But he and nine of his friends got caught in, in the dorm room drinking gin. So they he was writing for the Jack Lantern. Then he got caught drinking gin. And the dean said that he could no longer participate in extracurricular activities, which included writing for the Jack Lantern. And this is actually when he started using the pen name Seuss. He started submitting works to the Jack-O-Lantern under the name Seuss so that he could still participate in extracurricular activities. So after Dartmouth, he entered Lincoln College in Oxford. And he, he had intended to earn a doctorate of philosophy in English literature, but during during his stay at at Oxford, he met a girl and got married, and then he returned to the U.S. and never finished his doctorate. So he went from dr drinking gin to Oxford, and then he dropped out and got married, wife and didn't finish his doctorate. Um, he became nationally famous for his advertisements for Flit, which was an insecticide at the time, and his slogan, Quick Henry, the Flit, became a popular catchphrase. Then in 1937, while Geisel was returning from an ocean voyage to Europe, the rhythm of the ship's engines inspired, inspired the poem that became his first book, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. 
So after the flit is actually when he wrote, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. And it was it was the rocking of the boat on the ocean. So here's a boat. I don't think it was a sailboat, but that's all I can draw. So when he was on the boat, the rocking inspired inspired him to write, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. So after he wrote, and so I think that I saw it on Mul, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street, when he when he submitted it to publishers, it actually got rejected. It got rejected twenty seven times. Twenty seven times he couldn't get that book published. And then he wrote three more children's books before the U.S. entered World War II, which includes Horton Hatches the Egg, which he wrote in 1940. In 1943, he joined the Army as captain and was commander of the animation department for the first motion picture unit of the United States Army Air Forces. And he wrote, he wrote different films, including Your Job in Germany, our job in Japan and the private snafu, the private snafu series of adult army training. These were animated training videos that he wrote. And then our job in Japan became the basis for the commercially re- released film Designed for Death in 1947, which was a study of Japanese culture, and that also won an Academy Award for documentary feature. And then after the war, after the war, Geisel and his wife moved to La Jolla, California. La Jolla. La Jolla, California. And he returned to writing children's books. He wrote many works, including such favorites as If I Ran the Zoo, Horton Hears a Who, If I Ran the Circus, The Cat in the Hat, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and Green Eggs and Ham, which he wrote in 1960. Although he received numerous awards, he he never won the Caldecott Medal or the Newbery Medal. Although three of his titles from this period were chosen as Caldecott Runners Up, um, which are now referred to as Caldecott Honor Books. And then in May 1954, Life Magazine published a report on illiteracy among school children, which, which concluded that children were not learning to read because their books were boring. According to William Ellsworth Spaulding, who was the director of education division at Houghton Mifflin, who later became its chairman, compiled a list of 348 words, 348 words that he thought that he thought were important for first graders to recognize. And then he asked Geisel to cut the list to 250 words. So he came up with 300 words, 348 words, and he wanted them cut to 250 words. And then once they were cut to 250 words, he wanted Geisel to write a book just using those words. And Spaulding challenged Geisel to bring back a book that children can't put down. Nine months later, Geisel, using 236 of the words, 236, so he cut it further from 250 to 236, but he cut it to 236 and came back with the book The Cat in the Hat. So he took the challenge and wrote The Cat in the Hat, and it retained the drawing style, verse rhythms, and all the imaginative power of Geisel's earlier works, but because of its simplified vocabulary, could be read by beginning readers. The Cat in the Hat and subsequent books written for young children achieved significant international success, and they they remain very popular today. And uh, Dr. Seuss's books usually outsell other children's books. Um, For instance, in 2009, Green Eggs and Ham sold 540,000 copies. So 540,366 copies for, for Green Eggs and Ham. So Green Eggs, I'm not going to write the entire title, but Green Eggs and Ham. And, and that, was, that was 19, or that was 2009. 
2009. Also in 2009, The Cat in the Hat sold 452,258 copies. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish sold 409,000. And, and these outsold the majority of newly published children's books. So even though these have been out since, since the 1950s and the 1960s, they're still outselling many of the newly published books. Now, though he, he devoted most of his life to writing children's books, Geisel had no children of his own. And, and he would actually say, when asked about this, well, you have them, I'll entertain them. Then Geisel died of throat cancer on September 24, 1991, um, in La Jolla, California, and he was cremated and his ashes were scattered. His honors include two Academy Awards, two Emmy Awards, a Peabody Award, the Laura Ingalls Wilder Medal, and the Pulitzer Prize. Now, Geisel's pen name is regularly pronounced Seuss, which is an anglicized pronunciation inconsistent with his German surname. And, and he actually originally would tell people that his name rhymed with voice, so it was actually pronounced Soyce or Zoyce. Um, but since, since many people pronounced it Seuss, he actually started, started changing it, and he changed the way it was pronounced to Seuss. And he also thought it was advantageous for an author of children's books to be associated with Mother Goose. So because his name rhymed with Goose, Seuss rhymes with Goose, he, he, that was another reason why he changed the way it was pronounced. Um, some of his other pen names were Theo Lasig, which uh, Lasig is actually his, his last name spelled backwards, uh, Geisel, spelled backwards as Lasig. And then in, in that one case, he did use the pen name Rosetta Stone. Well, that's just a little bit about Theodore Seuss Geisel, or Dr. Seuss. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was a little bit long, but there was a lot of good information about him.